Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Mumshad Manambath and this is a video series on Game of Pods, a set of fun and hands-on Kubernetes challenges developed by CodeCloud and shared with the programming knowledge audience. This set of challenges will help you prepare and practice for the Certified Kubernetes Administrator as well as the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer certification so have fun. Hello and welcome to the Game of Pods, a set of fun challenges that help you learn and practice your skills with Kubernetes. My name is Mumshad Manambath, and this is CodeCloud. Game of Pods makes learning and practicing your Kubernetes skills fun by providing you with a set of challenges, such as to deploy new applications to a cluster, troubleshooting existing applications, troubleshooting and fixing security and network-related issues within a cluster, and many more. Let me now walk you through what it is and how to play it. Access the game portal at codecloud.com slash p slash game of pods. The web page loads a map. So here's the narrative. The game is based in a data center. Well, two actually. One on the west and another one in the east. The technical name of these data centers are Western Operations and Solutions Center and Eastern Operations and Solutions Center. In short, people call it West OS and East OS. Well, personally, I like to call it Westos and Eastos. OK, so we have two data centers. We have our Kubernetes clusters on each of them, the production cluster in Westos and backup cluster on Eastos. We also have different components, like the firewall in the north, services, ingress controllers, Redis islands. We have data lakes and a bunch of applications called Bravo, Pento, and Tyro. As you might have noticed, they don't look too well. Everything seems to be destroyed, either partially or completely. The reason you're here is to rebuild the data center, to troubleshoot and fix the clusters, and to redeploy the applications and bring back the data center to its original glory. You can click on each item on this map, the ones you can highlight, to see more details. In this case, we start with some of the basic applications, say the Bravo application. To fix this broken application, you may access the Kubernetes terminal by clicking the Fix It button. Once fixed, you will get a magic chant that you must submit to this portal to confirm that you have completed the task. So let's go ahead and try to fix it. When you click on the button, it takes you to a Kubernetes cluster, a real terminal to a real Kubernetes cluster right in your browser. Give it a few minutes for it to load Code Cloud. Once loaded, you can explore the environment by running the Kubernetes commands. In this case, we see that we have a cluster with one master and worker node. Click on the quiz or challenge portal link at the top to access the challenge portal. The challenge portal opens in a new window. This is where you're given information about the tasks you're supposed to complete. You're given an architecture diagram of the application to be deployed and a countdown timer before which you must complete all tasks. In this case, we're working towards redeploying an application stack from scratch. It happens to be a stack including Drupal and MySQL. The architecture involves creating and configuring persistent volumes, persistent volume claims, deploying Drupal and MySQL applications, configuring the MySQL secret, and configuring the deployment to use that secret. You can get additional information about each of these objects by clicking on them. This is a directory that will be used as host path for persistent volumes. These are persistent volumes, and you have the details about the name of the volume, the amount of capacity to be configured, access modes, etc. So let's try to configure the first few objects. 
We first create the required directories on the worker nodes. For that, we SSH to node 01 and create the required directories. We will now create the persistent storage volume. I have the YAML definition for it that I have prepared already. So I'm creating a persistent volume with the required name, access modes, storage capacity, and host path. Once done, create the persistent volume. At any time during your session, you may test your work by clicking on the check button. Your work is tested and you're given feedback instantly so you know exactly what you did wrong. In this case, we successfully created the directories and persistent volume, but not anything else. Similarly, create and configure other objects in the architecture following the specifications given. Well, I'll be right back after completing the rest. Okay, so we're done with all of them, and you can now see that everything is green. The Drupal application is accessible to external users through a node port service at port 30095. You can access the host's port 30095 by clicking on the link at the top. It opens up a new tab and shows you your application's interface. Feel free to configure it and play around with it if you have time in your session, but you're not really required to do so. Once the application is up and you can access it from a browser, you've actually completed the task. Once all checks are complete, your challenge is marked successful. Tweet and send a raven about your success to the rest of the world. If you have time, please leave some feedback too. You're also given the magic chant that will fix the cluster in the game portal. So copy it and paste it in the game portal. The application is now marked fixed. You may then head over to complete the next challenge. This is just one kind of challenge. It could be different in each one. Sometimes you're given an application that's half broken and you must troubleshoot and fix issues. Sometimes you're given a cluster that's half broken and you're asked to fix it. Sometimes you must bootstrap a new node to an existing cluster and many more. If you're new to any of these topics, make sure to go through them first. If you need our help, Check out our courses on Kubernetes administration and application development at CodeCloud. We have lectures that simplify complex concepts, followed by hands-on labs where you practice what you learned on a real Kubernetes cluster very much like this, and get certified on Kubernetes. Well, that's it for now. Access the game portal at codecloud.com slash p slash game of pods, and we hope you enjoy it. Hello there, and welcome to the first episode of this video series for the Game of Pods. My name is Vijan Palazi, and this is Code Cloud. In this episode, we will get introduced to the Drupal application. We will first understand what it is and how it works at a very high level. We will then Proceed with a quick demo installation of Drupal using just Docker and then finally understand how it is to be set up using Kubernetes for this game scenario. Before we begin with Drupal, let's understand what a CMS is. CMS stands for Content Management System. Content Management System or CMS is a software platform that aids in the management of content on a website. Drupal is one of the most popular CMS solutions which is open source and free to use. In simple terms, it provides a software platform that enables regular, non-technical users to publish content on their website easily. The CMS stores several information assets such as text, images, databases and so on. It has great standard features like easy content authoring, reliable performance, and excellent security. But what sets it apart is its flexibility. Modularity is one of its core principles. Its built-in tools help us build the versatile and structured content that dynamic web experiences need. 
Themes let us customize the layout and design of the website. Drupal can also be integrated with external services and other applications, making it one of the most powerful and scalable CMS solutions. While being extremely popular, being easy to set up and get started with, Drupal has a steep learning curve. There are several other simpler options out there that can be used as an alternative. WordPress and Joomla fall into this category. Drupal is used to make many of the websites and applications we use every day. A few popular examples are the NASA website, Emmy Awards, Verizon, and the Australian government website. Now that we know what Drupal is and what it does, let's move on to a demo installation using Docker. For simplicity, we will not use Docker Compose, Services, or Stacks in this demonstration. The installation makes use of two containers. The first container is the Drupal application itself. This container uses the Drupal latest or version 8 image. The other container is the DB container, which can be any of MySQL, Postgres, or MariaDB. In this demo, we will make use of Postgres. First, create the DB container as shown here. Make a note of environment variables used for Postgres. To keep things simple, we have used the same value called Postgres, all in lower cases, for the Postgres user, Postgres password, and Postgres database. The container also makes use of a bind mount called Drupal underscore data, which is mapped to path slash war slash lib slash Postgres SQL slash data on the container. Next, create the Drupal container itself using the syntax shown here. This container makes use of four bind mounts for different directories used by Drupal application. We have also linked the Postgres DB container to the Drupal container using the dash dash link option. The Drupal instance is port forwarded to the host port 80. Once both containers are up and running, Drupal can be launched by connecting to port 80 on the host or simply by launching a URL at HTTP localhost. When you launch the application for the first time, you should see the setup screen. Select English and then click on Save and Continue. In the Database Configuration section, make sure to select PostgreSQL as the DB type. Make use of the DB name, DB user, and password that were used for the environment variables while creating the DB container which in our case is Postgres, all in lower cases. Next, click on Advanced Options and change the host from localhost to Drupal-Postgres, which is the name of the link we created while running the Drupal container. Click on Save and Continue to install the site. This completes the application installation. Let's now try to build this application using Kubernetes, using a more complex architecture. As part of this architecture, we will be making use of MySQL database instead of PostgreSQL that we used in the Docker example. Once you launch the scenario, go to the Quest application portal where you will be presented with an architecture diagram. Click on each item on the diagram to see the specification of the Kubernetes objects to be created. Remember to always click on the connector arrows. In some cases, they too contain a specification that must be created before you can complete the challenge. Here are the Kubernetes objects that we need to create. Persistent volumes. We would be making use of host path based persistent volumes for data persistence of both the containers. A secret object called Drupal-MySQL secret 
is to be used for storing the environment variables used for the database, namely the DB name, DB user, and the DB password. Deployment. Both the MySQL and Drupal instances are to be created as a deployment with one replica each. Service. The DB service should be set up as a cluster IP. However, the Drupal service is the front-end application that the users need to access from their browser, and hence, it should be exposed as a node port on the port 30095. Once you have created all the components as per the specification, click on the check button in the quest portal to validate your work. If everything has been set up as specified, you should be able to launch the Drupal instance on node port 30095. Next, proceed with the initial setup as we demonstrated in the Docker example. You will also be presented with the magic chat that will allow you to fix the Bravo scenario in the game of pods. Well, that's it for this video. Head over to the game scenario and start building the Drupal application on Kubernetes. Good luck! If you face any difficulty completing this challenge, check out my solution video next. Thank you. Well, that's it for now. Access the game portal at codecloud.com slash p slash game of pods. And we hope you enjoy it. Welcome to another episode in the game of pods series. In this video, we will try to fix a broken Kubernetes cluster as well as deploy a simple file server on it. My name is Vijin Palazi and this is Code Cloud. This episode covers the Pento scenario in the Game of Pod series. The architecture for the scenario is a simple one. We have to deploy a single pod for a simple file server and expose it as a service. The file server will host the contents of a directory on the host and make it available on the web page. What makes the scenario challenging is that we have to troubleshoot and fix issues with the cluster components before we can deploy the pod and the service. We will talk about this in a bit more detail later. Let's first understand how to deploy the file server using Docker. This is a single container setup using the image code cloud slash file server. We will make use of a named volume by making use of a newly created directory called slash web on the Docker host to be mounted on the container. The container is exposed on the host port 8080. As a test, let's copy a file to the slash web directory. Once you verify that the file server container is up and running, navigate to the port 8080 on the host. You should be able to see the file server web page with the contents of slash web directory. Click on any of the listed items on this web page to see the contents of the file. Now that we have tested this on Docker, Let's check the Kubernetes based architecture for this scenario in the game of pods. As you can see, in this setup, you are required to identify and fix issues with the master and worker nodes. This needs to be done before you create the persistent volume claims, the pods, and the services, and all the other related objects that you see in the architecture diagram. Click on the master node and make sure that all the control plane components are running properly. Similarly, click on the worker node icon and make sure that the node is in a ready state and can run pods. Once the cluster issues are fixed, click on the other items on the architecture diagram and create the objects accordingly. Ensure that the slash web directory is already created on the worker node and create a persistent volume based on host path using this directory. Similarly, 
create a persistent volume claim matching the specs of the persistent volume that you just created using the slash web directory. Make sure that the object names created follow the specification provided in the architecture diagram. Next, create a single pod called GOP-file-server with the correct image and the correct volume mounts. Expose the file server pod as a noteport service. Again, go through the specification to make sure that you are using the correct ports. Make sure that you click on the connector arrows too. In some cases, the connector arrows have the specification that must also be set up correctly for the scenario validation to be successful. In this case, the arrow between the users and the file server service specifies the node port that should be used. Well, that's it for this episode. Be sure to watch the solution video for this scenario next. Thank you for watching this video. Wish you the best of luck with this challenge. Well, that's it for now. Access the game portal at codecloud.com slash p slash game of pods. And we hope you enjoy it. Hi again, and welcome to this episode in the video series for the game of pods. In this video, we will go through the tyro scenario of the game. My name is Vijin Balazi and this is Code Cloud. In this episode, we will check out the deployment of a Jekyll SSG. As before, we will first go through what it is and how it works at a very high level. We will then proceed with a quick demo installation of Jekyll using just Docker. And finally, we will go through the setup using Kubernetes for this game scenario. So what is an SSG? SSG stands for Static Site Generator. SSGs focus on one main task, generate a complete static HTML based site. This result does not rely on a database or other external data sources and therefore avoid any server side processing when accessing the website. Jekyll is a simple, blog-aware static site generator for personal projects or organization sites. Written in Ruby, it is distributed under the open source MIT license. The value Jekyll offers is that it allows you to take the static HTML from any existing website and quickly turn it into a working static site with its simple template library. In Jekyll, all of your content is stored in text files instead of a database. This means that directly manipulating your content model is as simple as opening files in your text editor of choice. The simplest form of content in Jekyll is stored in the root of the project as either Markdown or an HTML. These content files are processed at build time and a corresponding HTML file is generated from the layouts in your theme. Jekyll is also the engine behind GitHub pages. GitHub pages are public web pages for users, organizations, and repositories that are freely hosted on GitHub's github.io domain. Some popular websites that use Jekyll are Spotify for Developer, TwitchCon, Twitch for Developers, and the United Nations World Statistics website. In this section, we will install Jekyll using Docker. The installation makes use of two images. The first image we will use is the code cloud slash Jekyll, which offers a command line utility to install a new Jekyll site. The second image to be used is code cloud slash Jekyll serve that is code cloud slash Jekyll hyphen serve, which is the actual Jekyll instance that will be exposed over the host port 8080. The new site is installed at the location slash site, which is a named volume mount from the Docker host. First, run the temporary Jekyll container to install the new site in the location slash site. Make sure that the directory slash site already exists 
or is created before running this container. Once the new site is installed, this container will exit. Next, create a container using the jackal serve image. As you can see, this container makes use of the same named volume mounted as slash site to launch the jackal instance. Once the installation is complete and jackal serve container is up and running, you can access the application on port 8080. To do a basic test of the SSG functionality, go to slash site slash posts on the docker host and update the pre-existing markdown file. Refresh your browser and you should be able to see the changes directly on the website. Let's now try to build this application using Kubernetes. Open up the quiz portal and go through the architecture diagram. Click on each item, including the arrow connectors to see the specification of the objects to be created. This challenge also tests your skill on creating a new namespace, roles, role bindings, and setting up kubeconfig. Before you deploy the pod, make sure that all these objects are already created. For this challenge, we will be required to create a number of Kubernetes objects. Persistent volumes. We would be making use of host path based persistent volumes for the data persistence of the slash site mount. An init container called copy jackal site is used to install the new site at the location slash site. Once the copy is completed, the container will go to a completed state and then start the jackal serve container. Pod. Make sure that the jackal instance is created as a pod and not a deployment. Jackal node service is exposed over node port 30097 with the target port value of 4000 and the service port equal to 8080. Once you have created all the components, click on the check button to validate your work. If everything is set up as specified, you should be able to launch the Jekyll instance on the node port 30097. Make changes to the markdown file located under slash site slash underscore post to see the updates on the static website directly. Upon successful completion of the challenge, you will be presented with a magic chant that will allow you to fix the Tyro scenario in the game of pods. Well, that's it for this video. Head over to the game scenario and get working on this challenge. If you face any difficulty completing this challenge, check out my solution video next. Thank you. Well, that's it for now. Access the game portal at codecloud.com slash p slash game of pods. And we hope you enjoy it. Hi, and welcome to another episode in the Game of Pod series. This time, we will explore the Redis Island scenario. My name is Vijan Palazi, and this is Code Cloud. In this video, we will try to understand what Redis is, what a Redis cluster is, and the steps to set one up using Docker. Finally, we will discuss the Redis Islands challenge in the game of pods, which requires you to set up a Redis cluster in Kubernetes from scratch. Let us begin with an understanding of what Redis is. Redis is an open source, in-memory data structure store used as a key value NoSQL database, a cache, and a message broker. Redis is incredibly fast. It is written in ANSI C and works in most POSIX systems like Linux, BSD, OS X without external dependencies. One of the common use cases of Redis is using it as a cache. Caching is the process of storing data in a temporary storage area 
from which it can be rapidly accessed when needed in the future. Redis is used extensively as a caching system by GitHub, Weibo, Pinterest, Stack Overflow, and Flickr, to name a few. However, one of the most popular use cases is with Twitter, where Redis clusters are used for caching users, timelines, and even tweets. A Redis cluster is a distributed implementation of Redis. This is achieved by configuring a master and slave architecture for the nodes of the cluster. In a clustered setup, data is automatically sharded or split across multiple Redis nodes. The cluster in its simplest form requires six nodes in total, three master and three slaves. This cluster solution in Redis is referred to as a sentinel. In this model, data in the form of hash slots are replicated between master and slave nodes to ensure high availability. There are in total 16,384 hash slots in a Redis cluster that are split across equally among the master nodes. So, for example, in the case of a three master node setup, the slots are split equally amongst the three nodes. For high availability, the master nodes replicate these hash slots asynchronously among slave nodes. One master can have multiple such slave nodes. This way, if a master fails, one of the slaves is promoted to become the new master and hence the cluster maintains its high availability. Before we move on to the actual challenge, let's try and set up this Redis cluster on Docker. This installation makes use of the official Redis cluster build tutorial. First, create a new directory called redis-cluster. In this directory, we will create a cluster config file. The template of this file can be obtained from the official documentation at https redis.io. Next, create a Redis container with the Alpine image with a named volume mount using the config file that we created in the previous step. We will call this container as Redis-1. Similarly, create five more containers from Redis-2 to Redis-6. We will use a simple for loop to get these containers running. Next, get the IP addresses of all the containers using docker inspect. Run the loop as shown here. In this case, we are getting the IP address of containers redis-1 to redis-6, which all have been created in the default bridge network. Now that we have that information, we can create a cluster with the redis-cli and using the cluster create option. Log into any one of the six containers and run the cluster create command as shown here. The arguments for this command are all the nodes members of the cluster represented by their IP addresses and their ports. Enter yes when prompted. You can now run the redis-cli cluster info command from any running container to see the status of the cluster. This completes the installation section on Docker. Let us now take a deeper look at the Redis Island scenario in the game of pods. Click on each icon of the architecture diagram to learn more about the specifications to be followed to create the cluster. There are six persistent volumes to be created for the nodes, each of similar specification using a host path on the worker node. This setup makes use of a stateful set to ensure that each individual pods, which are essentially cluster nodes, are recreated with the same name and properties to maintain a constant identity. Click on the icon called redis-cluster to see the specifications pertaining to the stateful set. Make sure that the replicas, volume mounts, volume claim template, environment variables, commands and all the other specifications are correctly created. The config map is already created for you by default. 
this config map is to be mounted as a volume on the cluster nodes at the location slash conf. Ensure that the correct permissions are set up to this mount point. This is essential for the commands to run successfully upon the container startup. Once the stateful set is created and the pods are up and running, you are required to run a cluster configuration command from one of the pods. Check out the redis-cluster-config icon to get the full command. Enter yes at the shell when prompted. This will complete the setup of the Redis cluster with three master and three slaves on the Kubernetes cluster. Finally, create a service as described in the architecture diagram to finish this challenge. Thank you for watching this video and I wish you the best of luck with this challenge. Thank you. Well, that's it for now. Access the game portal at codecloud.com slash p slash game of pods. And we hope you enjoy it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the game of pods. My name is Vijin Palazi, and this is Code Cloud. In this video, we will check out the production clusters of Vesto scenario in the Game of Pods series. This is a customized version of the popular voting application from the official Docker Samples Git repository. In this version, instead of voting for cats vs dogs, you will be voting for Jon Snow vs Bran Stark. As usual, we will begin with what this application does followed by a quick demonstration on how to deploy the solution using just Docker. And finally, we will explore the challenge scenario in the game of pods. The voting application is a segmented one with five different components, each deployed as an individual container. The voting app frontend is written in Python. This is where a user will be able to log in using a host port and cast their votes. The backend web component for displaying the result uses Node.js. The votes are pushed to a Redis key value store. The worker, written in .NET, checks the Redis system for values in the queue and then pushes the result to the Postgres SQL DB container. Once all the five containers are up and running, we can access the vote web UI using a host port. The results of the voting can then be seen by opening the results UI, which is also port forwarded to a host port. You know the drill. Let's install the application using Docker first. In this case, we will use Docker Compose to do a local single node deployment. Here is the Docker Compose file that we are going to use for this demonstration. As you can see, the compose file we are going to use is a very simple one. It uses five services namely Redis, DB, Vote, Result and Worker each with its own specific images to be used. In this demonstration the Vote service is exposed on the post port 5000 and the Result service on the port 5001. The DB service makes use of a bind mount called db-data. Let us now run a docker compose up hyphen d to create the containers and bring up the application. Now that all the services and containers are up and running, let's check out the application. Connect to port 5000 on localhost to launch the voting web interface. Cast a vote between the two options. I prefer Jon Snow to Bran Stark, so I will vote for Mr. Snow here. Now let's check the results from the results UI. Connect to host port 5001. This should load up a web interface showing the results of the vote. Finally, let's have a look at the challenge scenario in the game of pods. Once you launch the scenario, 
click on each item on the architecture diagram to list the set of specifications to be created for the complete challenge. In this case, the first object to be created is a new namespace called vote-ns. Once this namespace has been created, you can create all the other components in any order. Make sure that you click on the arrow connectors as well. In some cases, they do contain a specification that must be completed. Create the deployment and services as per the specification. If you list the specification for the DB deployment, you will notice that it uses a volume type of empty directory. Make sure that you set it up as described. While this is not a truly persistent storage, it is enough for the application to work in this case. Also, remember that the vote service and the result service are front-end components. Hence, they should be created with a node port type service with the exact port specified in the diagram. Thank you for joining me on this session and good luck with this challenge. Thank you.